Chess friends, I hope you are doing well, today, I am going to show you an astonishing and incredible chess game played between me and Torch, Torch is a super chess engine currently holding the second position among chess computers, this game is very formal and informative, in this game, Torch played the Dutch defense against me, which is just mind blowing and superb, I also sacrificed my pieces to open up his king's position, involving strategies, tactics and opening strategy, I hope you will enjoy the game. So let's delve into it without wasting any time, I started with d4, instead of playing d5, or e5, England Gambit Torch opted for the Dutch defense with f5, it seems Torch learned from my previous video, particularly the King's Gambit strategy executed by Leela Zero against me, Torch then had various options like e6, d5 g6 with Bishop g7, Outer Knight, Castle, d6 followed by e5, or even c6 to develop Bishop Fumetto, I responded with g3, and later, Black played g6. The move g6 allowed me to control dark square spaces for my bishop, playing knight to f3 would further allow me to access squares g5 and e5 for a knight outpost, by advancing pawns to f4 and e3, I aimed to establish a strong stone wall pawn structure, thus, I began with pawn to c3 to create a pawn chain. After knight c6, I moved knight to f3, intending to occupy squares e5 and g5 for the knight, in response, my opponent played pawn to d6 to protect those squares and open the bishop's diagonal, preparing to attack the e5 square and potentially move the knight to e4, upon castling, my opponent played pawn to e6 instead of advancing with pawn to e5, resulting in a demobilized bishop's diagonal and a smaller center, subsequently, I played rook to e1 to prepare pushing my pawn on e4, coordinating with my queen on c2 and knight on d2 for support. This setup also allowed for bishop to g5 to pin down the knight to the queen, my plan is clear, I aim to open up the e-file, after the moves bishop g7 and bishop g5 to pin down the knight, I intend to push my pawn to e4 and strike in the center. Torch responded by playing pawn to d5, which was a mistake. This move tries to secure the e4 square but also provides an outpost for my knight on e5, eventually, I can push my pawn to c4 to break your center and target the backward e6 pawn, initiating the attack with pawn to c4, Torch's position became more rudimentary. Some might be tempted to capture the pawn on c4, but that move is rubbish as the human brain cannot process all the possibilities and attention required. I then played knight to a3 to attack the pawn, making it impossible for Torch to guard it with any of their pieces, while some might consider moves like knight to a5 or a6, I chose to ignore the threat and played rook to c1 to apply even more pressure on the pawn, some scientists might mistakenly consider moving their pawn to b5 to protect their structure, but that's a disastrous move as it weakens the light square diagonal, once I bring my knight to e5. It's obvious that your knight is pinned to the rook and your knights on c6 and a are vulnerable, with no protection from the queen or bishop on b7, this allows me to capture material and secure victory in the game, your situation is dire indeed. Reflecting on the position, Torch opted to castle kingside to avoid the risks associated with capturing d takes c4, following my moves e3 and knight to c3, you're still unable to take the c4 pawn as it opens up my knight on d2 to attack it once more. While moving the queen to d6 would connect the rooks, and he wants to reinforce his knight by maneuvering on d8 followed by f7 to kick out the bishop, so Torch executed his plan by moving the knight to d8, by playing knight to d8, he is able to play pawn to c6 to build a strong structure, moving the knight to f7 creates pressure on the bishop on the g5 square, you can see in this position that the Torch structure and piece positions are completely demobilized and unable to move due to limited space. Caused by the f5 move played earlier. At this juncture, I played knight to e5, directly dominating the boards, central squares and putting pressure on valuable black squares, playing pawn to f4 will build a stone wall pawn structure, where my bishop will lead an open half file diagonal, here, I can also push my queen side pawns to b4 and a3, followed by queen to b3, and advance the pawns together, simultaneously, I can advance my pawns on h3 and g4, which is advantageous for me. 
After he plays pawn to e6 to connect the pawn structure, I played pawn to a4, building a stone wall pawn structure. I can then push my queenside pawns on h3 and g4, and also advance my pawns on a3 and b4 due to my larger space advantage, as the position is completely closed. So let me share a quote in sudden with you. We don't grow when things are easy. We grow when we face challenges. He tries to counterattack by playing knight to f7, attacking the bishop. As the bishop moves back, my knight on e5 cannot be captured, as d takes e5 would attack both the knight and the queen simultaneously, after knight e4 and rook c1 occurred in the game, bishop d7 was played, I immediately captured the knight on e4 because after recapture, you won't be able to capture my knight on e5, which controls more space and creates a vulnerable situation for you, for instance, if you capture the knight with your bishop on e5 after I play pawn to g4. I can easily recapture it, if your queen then moves back to c7, it becomes vulnerable as I can capture your pawn on d5 and either the pawn on e4 or d5, putting heavy pressure on your queen with the knight, and a discovered attack by the rook, at this point, you must move your queen back to b8, after I play bishop to f6, I gain dark square control, and by moving my queen to the king side, I can soon checkmate you. This is the strategy if you capture the knight, additionally, I can even push my pawn to h4 and h6, taking the knight on e5 will also lead to similar circumstances as discussed, Torch opted for b5 to pressure the c4 pawn, making it unwise to recapture the pawn on b5 since it wouldn't benefit white, instead, the c file opened up for both rooks, white then closed the situation with c5, locking down the position. My strategy is to move the pawn to g5 and allow the knight to dominate over f6 and h6 with knight g4, after the king move out, the rook will join on g1, and the queen positioned advantageously on the g file, creating a dire situation for black, whose pieces were frozen. After queen c7 and knight e2, knight g3 was not as effective due to its limited reach. My main strategy was to activate my rook on g1, after bishop c8 king h1, a5 and g5 happened in the game, my knight is initiating a heavy strategy by reinforcing it on g4, taking control of these squares, in addition, the rook is coming there. Planning to queen move to h1 and g2 or h3, black had to address these stupid pawns in this squares for counterplay, otherwise he will lose the game like a cat invades a rat. Thus, after b4, bishop to b6 and a6, I played knight to g4 to seize control of these squares, black played bishop to d3 to position it well, supported by pawns, and opening the a-file for rook activation, due to their frozen pieces, black needed counterplay with a and b pawns. I initiated with rook to g2, planning queen to g1 later, after bishop to e1 and queen to b7, followed by bishop d2, black counterattacked with b3, but I locked the position with a3, blocking all counterplay. Black's attack was nullified, allowing me to focus on disrupting the king side. As the queen moved to e7, knight to c3, and queen to g1, my queen on g3 prepared a heavier plan, pushing h4, placing the rook on h2, and breaking open the file with h5, activating the rook, by playing knight to h6 or f6, the black king faced vulnerability, another strategy involved rook g3, queen to g2, and rook to g1, creating a triple queen bishop rook threat on b3, black then played pawn move to h5, which is a significant commitment, it can become both miserable or heavenly fortune for him. While capturing the pawn on h6 may seem tempting, it's not advantageous because the black king can easily move to h7, and the pawn on h6 serves as a protective barrier which is known as an umbrella pawn. So let me inspire you by making a quote. Every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. Instead of capturing, I opt to strike on the king side by moving my knight to f6, delivering a check, if the bishop captures my knight, I'll play g takes f6, opening the g file and putting the black king in a vulnerable situation, for instance, if the queen moves back, I can play rook takes g6, forcing the king to move and then sacrificing the rook with rook h6, leading to checkmate on g7, so, 
Instead of capturing on h6, I played king to g7, followed by bishop to e1, preparing to invade along the h4 square. Eventually, capturing the pawn on h5 will be advantageous, leading to a passed pawn on the g-file, as the queen and rooks maneuver, the rook comes in d1 square followed by rook d2, black played rook g8 in order to protect his structure, but you know what, you cannot just capture the rook on g8 as the position is blocked, making exchanges difficult and resulting in a drawable position, thus, I chose to strike in the center with f5, at this point. You can see that your g-pawn cannot capture the pawn on f5 because it would allow my knight to recapture the pawn on h5, creating a vulnerable situation for you, after e takes f5 happens in the game, this dark square diagonal opens up, allowing my dark square bishop to easily move along this diagonal, simultaneously, I can capture the pawn on h5, which is why I maneuver my knight to e2, followed by knight to f4 to attack the pawn after sacrificing the outside passed pawn on g5, rook e8, knight f4, and knight d8 happen in the game to protect the e6 square, I then make a daring sacrifice by playing knight takes h5, sacrificing the knight, as the two knights create a vulnerable positional weakness for you. If you dare to capture the knight on h5, which some 69 LO rated players might consider, the g pawn will become passed, after I move my queen to f2, it comes to h4 to attack the pawn. If you protect the pawn by playing queen to f7, I can easily capture it on f5, threatening to checkmate you with queen to h7, after you move back your king, I play bishop to g3, threatening bishop, d6 check, if you protect that square with knight to b7, I can execute a strategic move by playing knight to d7 check. The queen is pinned to the king, preventing your queen from recapturing my knight, after king moves and bishop d6 check, your king is completely exposed, unable to protect the queen. Even if you capture the bishop, I can recapture with my pawn, forcing your king to move, your king cannot go to these squares, so after king to d8, I can easily play queen takes on f7, putting me in a winning position. The game will be over, so going back to the position, we saw that g takes h5 is not viable, which is why after the king moves to f7, it becomes evident that the knight is creating a problematic situation in the king's position, the other knight on h5 is creating vulnerability for the black king. Both knights, along with the bishop, are creating a dire situation for black, causing them to be completely harassed, because white has a strong pawn on g5. I played pawn to g4 a long time ago in the opening, as part of my g4 opening strategy, this involves my opening strategy, so, at this point, you can see that the black king is in a miserable state, after I captured the rook on d8 and the capture happened, I played knight to f6. At this point, my queen is coming to the f2 square to invade and attack h4 on the bishop, bishop takes knight is not possible, as g takes f6 is ongoing, and after that, the file will be completely open, so, in this position, the rook has to protect that square, after the capture and recapture happened on the g8 square, I played bishop to g3 on the board. After knight d6 happened and h4 occurred in the game to break open the file in the h file, I will be able to play queen to h2 or the rook to h2 to open this diagonal for future attacks, after knight g7 occurred in the game to attack the bishop, you can see that on the queen side, the pawn structure is completely locked, the pawn is only two steps away from promoting, and if black somehow gets the b2 pawn, it will become evident that they will be able to push their pawn. This is why I first played pawn to h5, and when he recaptured it, the file opened up. After rook e2 happened to get the open file, he played queen to e7 to attack the pawn on g5. Immediately, I captured the knight on the h5 square to open up the g-file and get the passed pawn, in this position, my strategy involves my bishop having the open file, the other rook can come to the h2 square, and the queen can also come into play. This is why I execute a heavy attack by sacrificing my rook on h5, subsequently moving my queen to h2, if you dare to protect the pawn by playing queen to f7, then I can execute a heavy attack by playing pawn to g6, after you capture, I can play bishop to e5 to attack the bishop on the h8 square, when the king moves up, 
rook to g2 will come to invade and attack the queen, the h5 pawn is under attack, so you have to protect that pawn by moving your queen to f7. After I capture your bishop and you recapture, having the queen, f4 will come with the idea of playing rook to g5, attacking both the f5 pawn and the g5 pawn simultaneously, my queen can easily capture this pawn structure, making it completely winnable for me. Going back to the position, we see that you cannot protect your pawn using queen to f7 or h7 square. After you play pawn to f4, I immediately capture it, and after queen f7 happened, I played queen to h3, and the queen moves to the c8 square, a few moves later, I played rook to g2 to move the pawn to the g6 square, subsequently, I executed a higher attack by playing a strategic maneuver, queen to c7, and the bishop moves to the e5 square, attacking the dark square bishop directly on the board, after the king moves back, there's a queen check, king ups, queen e7 rook f1 rook f2 and at this juncture. I am threatening to play rook to f7, attacking the bishop, creating a dire situation for you, the pawn is well protected by the queen, and black cannot give me a single check to my king, moreover, torch didn't give me a single check in the game, that's my strength, which is why he played bishop to g to check, after I captured and made a couple of moves, when the rook goes to the a4 square, the bishop captures, and the queen gives him a check, a few moves later, it becomes a checkmate on the h6 square. Putting black into a dire situation, what a spectacular and wonderful gam, I enjoyed it very much, if you enjoyed my content, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel, wishing you all the best, bye bye. See ya.